filter up because I need to drag this screen over here and this screen over here. Got it. All right, so you'll see that live in the corner. Now I just need to find us. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, welcome to everyone at home. And if you are, if you've popped on already, thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Sandra. I am call, I am uh, the Public Relations and Development Specialist at Maryland Crime Victims Resource Center. If this is your first time joining us, this is our Lunch and Learn. We go live every month on the third Tuesday of the month to kind of bring information that we think would be useful either to our community or to victims directly. Um, this one is more related to our victims um, that have received our services. Um, this month, we're going to talk about our new initiative, which is Pathways to Healing. Uh, before I get too far into that, let me introduce the people that are with us. Uh, we have Sherry Grove, Kathy Goucher, and Alicia Barksdale. Um, if you guys want to do quick, quick uh, introductions to yourselves and where you're from, then that would be great. And then I will start into our dialogue. Sherry, we'll start with you. Hi, so thank you for having me. Um, I'm from Upper Marlboro. And um, I'm happy to share my story of how I came to know you guys as well when it's appropriate. And I'm the owner of Equispirit Coaching. Thank you, Sherry. Kathy? Hello, thanks for this invitation. It's exciting to connect um, with this community. Um, I'm an art therapist. I'm located in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and um, the communities up here are um, really my, my focus. Um, I am an art therapist educator at Notre Dame Maryland University, and I also am a co-founder and continue to be very involved in Make Studio, which is a progressive, progressive, excuse me, art studio for adults with disabilities located here in Baltimore. Lovely. Thanks, Kathy and Alicia. Well, thank you so much for um, allowing me to join this um, really important venture. Um, I am a resident of Howard County, longtime resident. I'm a music therapist, and I've uh, had the opportunity to um, become the program director of the music therapy education program at Washington Adventist University in Tacoma Park, which is just over the line, of, um, like in the three corners of DC, Montgomery, and PG counties. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Um, so what I wanted to start off with is, so our new initiative is called um, Paths to Healing. Um, and what we're hoping, what I'm hoping to do, and what we at MCVRC are hoping to do is kind of turn some of our attention to um, how people can heal after becoming the victim of a crime. And, you know, I think that, um, you know, becoming a victim of crime, whether it has happened to you or someone you love, um, you know, a lot of times like we deal, we do, um, Maryland Crime Victims does handle and provide resources to victims of all crimes. Um, for this specific thing, it might be a little bit more towards homicide or maybe even domestic violence or rape or, you know, something like that, where, you know, there's a long healing process that comes with it. And um, we have a longstanding support group, which meets monthly. Um, but I think that sometimes people heal in different ways. And um, I learned about art therapy first um, years ago from my cousin that, um, went to something that was through her church um, and she just told me how uh, amazing it was and how she felt when she left and I think that really resonated for me and uh, so like 15 years later here I am at Maryland Crime Victims and I'm like you know this would be so great to uh, introduce people to different ways um, that they can maybe get some of those emotions and process uh, some of the information that they have in their heads um, and so this initiative is a quarterly gathering 
um, at different locations around Maryland. You know, we're, I'm, I don't, I want to make sure that, that people know that they are, um, even if they're not in the, um, the Prince George's Baltimore area, that they are welcome to come. I, I understand that it's, it can be a little bit of a drive depending on where you're from. If you're from, you know, one of the outskirts, uh, Eastern shore, or Western Maryland, um, but hopefully it'll be totally worth it. Um, if you have participated in our homicide support group or any of our other events, and you know that there'll be some familiar faces there, I think that sometimes that helps you to kind of take that step forward to say, you know, me and someone else that I know are going to try this and, and see how it goes. Um, and then hopefully those people will find something that works for them and then can, you know, go into maybe individual sessions or other groups or, or what have you. But this, um, this that we're introducing is quarterly. So it'll be a one-time thing, you know, once a year you'll see Sherry and, you know, if you love it, great. Um, but we'll, we'll get into all that. So anyway, so before I jump ahead, um, so I'm super excited about doing that because I do feel like, you know, everyone kind of processes differently. Um, and so Sherry is doing healing with horses. Kathy is doing art therapy and Alicia is doing music therapy. Um, and those are just the three things that we're going to explore this year, this calendar year. Um, so first one up is Sherry. Uh, Sherry has been with Maryland Crime Victims for some time, and she does healing with horses. Um, so I guess, um, Sherry, I guess to, to start off, how did you get involved with uh, horse, not therapy, but like healing with horses? Well, I actually... Um went to the Touch by a Horse certification program, and they're based out of Colorado. I studied with Melissa Pierce, who is a psychotherapist, and she is one of the founding members, I guess, of the whole horse healing movement. Um, so it's a two-year certification program with eight trainings throughout the United States, um, which focused on how to work with people that are going through trauma. Um, amazing program, because I was able to see firsthand the work that the horses can do. Um, just being in the presence of the horses, somehow the magic happens there. Um, there's feelings that come up that might've been buried. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with just being in the present moment. Um, but briefly, I'll go into how I connected with you guys. My daughter was murdered in 99. So back then, the Maryland Crime Victims Resource Center was the Stephanie Roper Foundation. A kind soul introduced me to you guys and helped me through the whole process. It was the babysitter's boyfriend that, that hurt Tori and she ended up passing away from her injuries. But the whole process of going through the grief on top of the layers of dealing with the criminal, criminal aspect of it, someone taking your child's life, the court process, all of it, um, just an unbelievable journey. So the horses helped me bring a lot of awareness to stuff that I had buried, a feeling of wholeness and peace. So I hope to help other people with that as well. Thank you for sharing that. And I mean, I definitely, Sherry, you know, I think about you all the time and your story. <laughs> and um, um, did you have experience with horses before you, before you kind of went down that venture? Yeah, yeah. So I fell in love with horses at two years old. My cousin put me on the back of a Shetland pony and that was it. I got the bug. And um, I always knew I wanted to work with animals, but I didn't know in what capacity. I was thinking about going to vet school and going down that path. Um, I ended up going to an open house. Um, let's see. So it was about like 2014. Um, a therapist was showing how the horses heal and that she did a little demo and she was a touch by a horse graduate. Um, and that's how I got involved with this aspect of horses, but I've always been drawn to them. Just being yeah. in their presence was, you know, just seeing horses grazing in a field can somehow bring about this sense of peace and calm. So there's something there. So I'm excited to, you know, 
embark on the healing journey with them for sure. Yeah, no, that, that is definitely interesting. And oh, so, okay. So I was never the horse person. Um, I did bring my sister down to meet Sherry and her horse's name is Snicker Doodle. And my sister's totally, um, she's all about it. Like she's, she, for me, it like was so intimidating because they're so big and I'm an animal person. Like I love dogs. I've, I've owned ferrets. Like I want to own a bunch, like, you know, um, but horses for me were, were a little, they, they were a little intimidating. And, um, and my dad ended up owning horses and my sister absolutely loves them. But so I get it. I mean, I, <laughs> And I think that some people are like me where they're, they're intimidated, like they, they're scared. So let's go into what um, people can expect. What kind of experience do they need to have? Because I know they, I know they don't need experience, but can you go into like what people can expect and what kind of experience they need on your end? Sure. So a lot of my clients have had no experience at all with horses, except from seeing them in a field on their drive. Um, so that's the beauty of this work. There's no riding involved. The interaction with the horse itself is based on your own comfort level. Um, I had a client a few years ago who was very scared of horses, but she wanted to experience the healing that they brought. But it was interesting because Snickerdoodle is so perceptive to how people feel. Um, with this particular client that was really scared, he stayed a little bit at a distance. Mm -hmm. But the awesome thing was, is she was still able to work through things and process things and feel the energy coming from him um, that allowed her to get into that heart space. So as far as interaction, it's totally up to, you know, the individual person of how close they get. Um, in the beginning of the session, I do a little safety demo. So that way people are comfortable with knowing, you know, the basics of what to look out for, but Snickerdoodle is my partner in the work and he's super, super sweet and cuddly. So, you know, we, we just work through all of it. It's all a part of the process, I think. Thank you for that. And I absolutely think that, um, you know, it's so important to, for people to know that like, you know, even if you are. Um, hesitant of this process and even these other processes, because I'm going to hop into each one of these with everyone, right? Um, I think that we, you know, we create these barriers for ourselves where we're like, oh, but I'm not good at art, or I don't, I, I don't, I don't know about horses. I'm, I'm scared of them, or like, oh, I'm not good at music. I can't carry a tune, and and it makes us not try to experience the experiences that that we might like. It might benefit us in some way. Um, so I think it's important to say out there in the world, even if you are hesitant, like you can stay over in a separate, so you, know, like you can, you can be a little bit further away. You can go a little bit slower. You can be a little bit more cautious and then that's okay. Um, totally. Okay. Just to dip a toe in and see what happens. Yeah, man. Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, and I think that's, that's my big thing for, for this, um, this initiative. Um, and so what do people need to bring? What should they wear? Um, oh, let me back up. Sherry's um, experience healing with horses is going to be this Saturday, this Saturday in Upper Marlboro. If you need information on that, please uh, drop a line in the chat box or you can drop me an email if you guys uh, message us through Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all those. It all comes to me anyway. So let me know. Um, and I'll give you the specific details of the location and, and things like that. But what should people wear? What should they bring with them? Um, all that good stuff. Because I think the weather should be not too bad. Thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> because yes. This, the we weather have, will this help. Sunday was Oh, it would have been really tough for sure if it was this past <laughs> Sunday with the wind and the cold. But we're outside in the pasture. Um, there is a little bit of shelter from the sun. If someone needs to step under the shelter, that's totally fine. They should wear play clothes because the horses are shedding right now. So hair is everywhere. And uh, Snickerdoodle loves to give kisses. So bring clothes, you know, wear clothes that you don't mind getting dirty. Um, definitely hard shoes. Tennis shoes are okay or boots, no open-toed sandals just to protect your feet. Um, a journal would be great to bring. 
um, that's about it. And an open mind really is, is important. So important. So play clothes, closed shoes. Um, mm -hmm. I have seen some people with their flip-flops on already. I mean, good for you guys. I'm not about that life, but uh, <laughs> a journal. Uh, what about, um, um, this is this is a question from my dad who's who has passed, but I tell you what, he doesn't go to a farm without apples and carrots. How do you feel about that? So um, if you want to bring some some treats for him, some apples or carrots, it's totally fine. After our session is when you would have the opportunity to to give him the treats and I'll be right with you. OK, perfect, because my dad was an overfeeder. I'm just saying. But all the horses knew when he was coming to the farm because they're like, hey, that's the guy with all the snacks. So. And Snickerdoodle's like a dog. He loves treats for it's like sure. You around. They're like, yeah, that guy's getting all the attention. So I guess maybe afterwards is a good idea so that he's not all <laughs> yeah. over the one person that has the goodies. Exactly. Okay, so perfect. Perfect. Let me see if I had other questions. I don't know if there was any other. Oh, okay. So this is going to be a group session. We're hoping to get about 10 people right now. We have three people that are coming out. Um, so we have slots for seven more people. Um, I will drop a link to how you can sign up for it if you guys don't message, but it will be first come first serve. Um, like I said, there are seven more slots available. Um, and this is a group session, but you do personal sessions as well, right? I do. I do. Um, and and personal sessions is when we can get into the really deep work. More specific, you know, more specific. So all of these sessions that people will be attending will be a little bit more of an overview of what you can expect later. We don't want to deep dive into anyone's personal um, heavy, heavy work. Um, I think the big thing with that is that the person next to you might not be ready to receive the information that you might want to share. Um, so I think in these sessions, you know, we're going to be conscientious of, of the space that we're in. Um, and, you know, uh, before we hopped on, I was telling the ladies of a couple of people where, you know, they're, they're in different moments of their journey. Um, I think that, you know, we just need to make sure that we are conscientious of that. Um, so anywho, so there are personal sessions available. You do other group sessions, Sherry? Yeah. So now that the weather is finally getting warmer, I would love to start something where we have a weekly group, a connection group. Um <laughs> Yeah, so I if I could start two groups per week, that would be ideal. Like one, like you know, maybe a Monday morning group, and then another one, one evening during the week. So stay tuned for that information because I want to definitely put something together. And I also wanted to mention there are bathrooms on site, um, so they're really nice bathrooms. It's it's a beautiful facility. So in case anybody was wondering. Yeah, so important. Also, so important, especially if you come from like an hour away with your coffee cup, you might need, you might really need that info. Um, okay, perfect. So um, if you're coming this Saturday, you'll see me briefly and then I'm going to roll because I do not want to impede on people's healing space. Um, I am not a, um, a direct uh, person that um, is part of the homicide support group and so i am very conscientious of of where i am and and whose story that i i might be listening to if people want to share their story with me that's up to them um, but otherwise you know i don't want to impede on that so what i'll do is i'll kind of do introductions and then i'm going to leave um and one of our board members who is a survivor will stay on with sherry and um, kind of walk people through whatever they need to do and i think she enjoyed the last time she came out anyway um and the last bit that I wanted to chat with you, Sherry, uh, directly as far as my direct questioning, I'm, I apologize, lady, I'm going to do it all to you guys too. Um, payment. Insurance is not yet accepted, right? It does not, right. not yet receive. Insurance does not yet recognize this process as a therapy per se, right? Right, exactly. So with the insurance, um, the model that I use is the Gestalt um, coaching method. So we don't do any diagnostic work where we submit notes or anything to the insurance company. So sadly, insurance doesn't cover it. Um, but I don't want anyone to be turned away from the work if they need healing and they're unsure about funds. I always highly encourage people just to reach out to me. 
Thank you so much, Sherry. And I am going to tag at the spirit, right? Let me see if I can find you on this. There you are. Mm -hmm. um, I am throwing her direct link in the uh, chat box here on Facebook. Um, so it's Equispirit Coaching. You can find her on Facebook. Um, and like I said, I just dropped it in the comment box in case you are not interested in the group or, or what have you, and you want to reach out to Sherry directly, please, you know, let her know and she can work with you directly. Otherwise, um, I will also share the info to sign up for our Saturday session. Thank you so much, Sherry. Um, yeah. and oh, one more thing I wanted to add to is if yeah. um, anyone really doesn't want to work with the horses, I do offer phone coaching as well. And there's a, a free consultation over the phone to go over everything as well. Thank you so much, Sherry. I appreciate well, that. Thanks for having um, me. And then when, if, if there are any questions at the end, or if you guys want to open chat, we definitely can do that shortly. All right. Next up, Kathy. Kathy is doing our art therapy. She is at, let me try to get this right. Notre, Notre Dame University of Maryland. So close. So close. Notre Dame of Maryland University. I knew um, I was going to mess it up. Like in my head, I, I, I just knew it. And I actually looked it up. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Yes. It yeah. is. It's, it's, I, I understand I'm at Maryland Crime Victims Resource Center. Right. right exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we we lovingly <laughs> refer to it as NDMU. It's a little easier. Yes. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, so uh, Kathy's um, a little bit different. So this is going to be art therapy. So uh, we are doing, we think, we're pretty sure. We're like 90% sure. We're this definitely sure now. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're definitely sure now? Yeah. Okay, yeah. June 24th is right. our date. So if you're interested in art therapy, June 24th is the date that we're going to go as a group. Again, this will be a very, um, I think Sherry was interested in kind of visiting all the all the places. So I think that would be super fun too. So you guys all kind of create this network, right? Um, so June 24th, we'll be heading out that way. Um different setup. I think we're going to be able to allow more people, but again, uh, people will be able to um, come out as a, as a safe group with other people that are part of our um, community, our, our family, Maryland Crime Victims family, uh, come out and do some art therapy. Now, I have forced my husband into art before, and he's told me, babe, listen, I, I cannot I am not an artist. I, I'll go with you, but listen, don't expect, you know, anything amazing, right? And I'm the person that's always trying to come up with um, something to something crapsy. That's just who I am. Um, but I do recognize that people have different levels of art appreciation. So what 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 say you, Kathy, to those naysayers of I'm not the artist? So um art is uh, a broad can be a broad term. I think that art gets a bad rap in terms of folks think about product, right? What does it look like? Is it um, finished? Is it right? Um, does it look like the rest of art out there with a capital A? And what we're really about um, as art therapists and certainly holders of this space that we intend to create and provide um, on the 24th and beyond, I'll talk a little bit further about, is really space for tinkering and space for finding one's own way um, with engaging in creative, with creative materials. And also creative materials can be a lot of different things. So just as there's that capital A art, materials can be found objects, can be scraps, can be things that are repurposed and found new meaning in. Um, so we're really intending to create a space and hold an open studio type space for folks to come and really engage in process. So it's engaging in process with themselves, engaging in process with the studio, and just kind of exploring art materials, creative materials. I love that. I love that so much. Um, so they're going to be using um, different materials, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that um, we talked about it would be like an introduction as well. So um, I'll, let me let me back up a little bit. So the um, the program that Kathy has is um, students that are working to be art therapists. Mm -hmm. And if you are not familiar with art therapy, let me tell you, when I wanted to put this together, I went 
on the World Wide Web that has all the answers. And I looked, I was looking for art therapists and um, I found this really dated list that had uh, so, so many uh, resources and I kind of narrowed it down to Maryland art therapists and uh, what have you. And there's, there's a lot of different things going on in that capacity in that some of them only do private sessions. Some of them um, only do X, Y, Z, only service certain areas. Some of them only service domestic violence. Some of them only service uh, people that are, you know, uh, child abuse or some, you know, there's very, very specific um, areas of expertise depending on the person. But what I also did find is a lot of them were not receiving new clients. And I think that um, it's kind of like a blessing and a curse, right? Like we um, have created a really big, uh, really large awareness as to how important mental health is. So people are finding therapists, which is great. They're finding art therapy, which is great. But then when you want to introduce people to it, you're like, who's available? Mm -hmm. um, and so luckily I, I, I came upon Kathy through another therapist and they said, you know, reach out to Kathy, you know, she, she runs this program. Um, and hence here we are. So Kathy runs a department that is training art therapists mm -hmm. to go out into the world and therapy people. Mm -hmm. And so, um, these people, these, uh, students, that will be a part of this session are graduating, right? And it's a two year, two year program, two year program. And so they'll be going out into the, into the world to provide therapy. Um, so this is, um, this particular program that we are doing is gonna be um, part of their, their graduation, right? And so we're able to have more we're able to have a bigger session. Am I getting all this right? A little bit. Yes, mostly. Uh, can I add mostly. to that? No, absolutely. It, it is true. We are looking forward to a larger session. And we actually host, um, it's called Art Hives. And it's an international movement um, of public practice art therapy because our program is really rooted in community and inclusivity. Um, so training art therapists in a classic way to understand theories and understand systems and how art therapy and art making nests into those things. So to be able to go out into the world and practice in traditional settings, but really also to embrace um, what is coming, which is more of a community accessible mental health model that we so desperately need. And I'm sure Alicia is probably going to say the same. Um, and so we are really holding space between those two worlds. And this is a wonderful opportunity for our students to experience another layer of that community-based practice. Um, we host twice a month here on campus, Art Hive um, at NDMU. And that is open to anyone anyone, all ages, any abilities, um, disability, it's radically inclusive. So beyond this offering of having an open studio that we can maybe, you know, accommodate, I, I forget exactly the number we talked about, but certainly more than 10 um, mm -hmm. with materials and space to do engage in, in art making. Um, we do that twice a month. And so I will definitely um, keep uh, the community looped in on those offerings because if you come and enjoy the community that is built during an art making session, um, you can certainly avail yourself ongoing of that. And yes, these students are will be graduating in August um, and they will certainly go into a host of different um, employment opportunities um, and they'll be graduating um, and shortly thereafter receiving their graduate license as art therapists. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and so I, I love that. And I love that um, it's so inclusive at your um, at your establishment there. Um, so people that are I'm actually dropping your link as well. Um, your Facebook link art therapy at Notre Dame, you know, Notre Dame of Maryland University. Excellent. Um, dropping that link. You can see those hives. They look very interesting. Um, so if that is something that you're interested in, please, you know, you can follow them, um, give them a, a follow on social media, um, kind of keep up to date as to what events they're doing. 
and you are more than welcome to come out on June 24th, where you'll have some of our survivors. So it'll be a little bit um, more geared towards, um, you know, uh, dealing with victims and trauma, you know, and, and trauma. So yeah, if I can respond to that just briefly too, Sandra, yeah. that while this is going to be similar in terms of setup and art engagement um, and focused on wellness and social, you know, process and connection to self and others, we are going to, the students will have, we will have created a fact sheet takeaway for you about art therapy, about um, then further thinking about art therapy if you want to pursue that in an individual way um, with a different provider, you know, across the state and region. Um, so we will have that information for sure. It won't yeah. just be come in and do whatever you want. There and then leave. Yeah. And yeah. then leave and you're in the dark. Yes. And right. so I, the other thing that I really, really like about the processes that that we have set up with the with the two universities that we're dealing with here is their students that are graduating. So they're they're already there. They're already on the cusp of graduation, and they will be providing um, services in the very, very near future. And so what I like about that is that um, for art therapists, at least I you know did the legwork for that, and and you know I called so many and left messages and. You know, it was tough because, you know, people aren't receiving, but if you, if you grab a young person and you create a connection and you feel comfortable with them, and hopefully that, you know, is a, a beautiful thing that happens, then you could possibly stay with that person and be one of their first clients. And I, and I, I love that because there's longevity to it. Um, and if, if there's no connection, but you can see a connection to the work, then, you know, of course, um, you know, Kathy's going to provide those um, resources on mm -hmm. um, on paper so that you can look for someone that can provide um, either individualized or, or what have you. I do know that while I was doing this, um, the YMCA in Anne Arundel, I think, was doing what? was doing a similar art therapy, um, similar, except that it was specifically for domestic abuse mm -hmm. and, and I think sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. um, so not necessarily the same, I mean, not so different than us, but not necessarily the same as well. So um, I urge you if, if art therapy is something that you're interested in, you know, there are resources available. I think the, the one at the YMCA was was free um but it was only for females and so that was you know because it, it you know um and so i i wanted to make sure that we the one that we had was more open to just everyone in the inclusivity as far as that was concerned um and to add to that too we would yeah. certainly as i said before with the art hives and it, it would be no different for this situation we would welcome <laughs> children or family members who, you know, you wanted to, wanted to come with or needed to come with, with regard to, mm -hmm. we're not providing childcare necessarily, but, but we are, we are prepared to welcome those who, who come. Oh, lovely. No, that's very nice. Very nice. Especially, I think that um, some people, they have um, their young people with them. So that's mm -hmm. nice that they won't have to provide um, care. And again, not deep diving into specific things. So if mom feels a different way than sister does, um, and they both came together because they rode together and, you know, what have you, um, you know, we're, we're not deep diving. And so, you know, that space is still um, personal, personal space, and then they can get into it later. Um, I did find that there are many art therapists that do accept insurance, mm -hmm. um, which I think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. There were some providers that I found on the list that I had that did not. Um, so they were strictly, um, I guess, you know, out of pocket, out of pocket payments. Um, so I urge you if, if you do have insurance that provides it, you know, you can look into what your insurance provides, you know, provides um, as far as, um, you know, therapy is concerned and, um, you know, find what's right for you. So, mm -hmm. okay. Anything before I move on to Alicia? I don't think so. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You're on the ticket, Alicia. So this one is a little bit different. So music therapy is what Alicia is doing. I'm going to try to get this one right too. Hold on. Advent. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh my gosh, some Adventist, Washington Adventist University? Yes, that's right. Okay, I got that one right. I was like, Fort Washington Medical. Uh, <laughs> throw all the words in there. Um, and it is the music therapy department that Alicia is um, coming, you know, coming from. 
And that program is a little bit different. So it is a four year program. It is. It's a four year uh, undergraduate program. Um, so we have students who are completing a four year Bachelor of Music Therapy degree. Um, and we also have uh, students who have completed a music or a psychology undergrad degree and they now want to become a music therapist so they can come and get the music therapy training um, it's called a music therapy equivalency um, and then all of our students when they've completed our program complete a six-month internship which is full-time it's a uh, thousand and twenty hours um, and then they take a board certification exam to be uh, board certified music therapists. And then in the state of Maryland, now we have um, licensure. So they will be a licensed professional music therapist um, as well. Um, and some music therapists uh, do um, accept insurance uh, as well. Not all, but some. So just awesome. With... And you guys are in Tacoma Park, right? T Tacoma yes. Park. Yes. So that's where we are going to be going for this session. And we are in, um, we were saying October is going to be our gathering there. So hang tight to a date for that. It is a little further out than, than um, you know, this Saturday. So we've got a few, we've got a little bit of time to figure out what date is going to work out. Um, Alicia is, is working on that. So uh, just kind of like ticket, it's probably a Saturday in October uh, once we firm that up. So art therapy, now this one, I think that most people like some kind of, I mean, I'm sorry, art, music, music therapy. Most people like some kind of music. Like how are we tying in um, music to therapy? Like are we, what is it, what should people expect to receive as far as this therapy is concerned and what they would have to do? Like how much music inclination are, are we talking here? Like I know all the music, but I can't sing or play anything. So is that okay? That is absolutely okay. This this will be the session that we're going to be providing is an all inclusive session open to to anyone um, of all ages. Again, so if you if you need to bring your younger family members with you, they are they are welcome in this session. Um, this session is probably going to be largely um, drums and percussion. So it will be a drum and percussion circle. There will also be um, rhythmic breathing involved. There will be um, some singing opportunities there, but people will not be required to sing. They will not be required to play anything if they don't like want If you to. want the session to end early, I totally can. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, also, you know, if, if someone comes and, and they just want to sit there and experience what others are doing, that's that's also fine. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but what it will look like is is um, we'll have available a lot of different percussion and rhythm instruments. And um, it will be myself and colleagues and some of our music therapy students. Um, and it will be um, we're going to facilitate just some uh, playfulness with the rhythm instruments. Um, it's a, a big group endeavor. Um, you don't need any musical training or any musical background. Um, you can you can be a total non-musician and still come and uh, participate and enjoy the feeling of community, of um, creating this sort of meditative sound together. Um, the wonderful thing about group drumming there are lots of wonderful things about it. Um, it's a very mindful practice. So we will create a groove together, a rhythmic groove, where it almost becomes um, like a mantra or a chant. The rhythm um, can be very soothing, very meditative, um, and it really brings us into the present moment, the mindfulness um, and the um continuity of it is just a fantastic treatment for uh, relieving stress and anxiety um, for reducing that overstimulation in the vagus nerve that gets overactivated by 
um, trauma that we've experienced. So this type of rhythmic participation um, is wonderful for um, healing from trauma or from, you know, all of the stress of our daily lives as well. Nice. Okay. So don't need to, don't need to be the singer. You don't need to be the instrument player. You don't need to know all the tunes from 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and today. Um, you can just come on out and get the feeling of, of music, right? And um, again, no deep diving. Um, this is going to be uh, something where people can see if they are enjoying the moment and if it's something that you feel has a therapeutic uh, value to you. Um, Alicia, you said that you also have a list of um, music therapists that some are that are covered and some aren't. Yeah, I we would be able to um, refer anybody to the type of music therapy practice that you would want to do. Um, we provide some music therapy on our campus as part of our clinical training, um, but I also could refer anyone to the type of music therapy or music therapist that they would want. Um, there are a lot of music therapists that do um, counseling and music therapy together. So that mm -hmm. might be a nice choice for some people. Um, so if you come and you uh, want to just check out what music therapy is about, um, and then you could talk about um, you know the types of needs that you have and we could help you find the the type of music therapy intervention that would be just right for you. So that I'm writing down a question that I'm going to ask shortly. Um, <laughs> um, so, okay. So, and then you two ladies, and I'm sure Sherry, you probably also have contacts as far as other um, healing with horses type of institutions. I do know that there's like we're not gonna we're not gonna dabble into this just yet, but I know that there's like riding. Um, therapeutic riding as well, which I do know that they do for um, like kids with special needs or um, the special needs community, like they tend to do a lot of those like, but you know, it's a different kind of, of situation because, um, you know, they're getting like, a, it's like that nonverbal connection that's going on with, with a lot of kids. But um, do you guys have information for not just, you know, us in Maryland, it's so funny because, you know, we're so close to so many states, depending on where you live. Um, it's not like we're in, you know, um, and so do you guys have the, um, uh, the connections for the ones that are close by, like maybe in, in, you know, Northern Virginia or, um, Pennsylvania, things like that, where people could reach out to a little bit further of a, yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Great. Cause, uh, I know like, you know, I'm, I'm from Prince George's County and I knew that like Arlington and Alexandria were right there for me growing up. Like, you know, I'm a little bit deeper into Maryland now, but, um, but you know, it's still, it's still just, it's so very close, especially if you're finding, you know, what the, the services that you need, uh, you know, it's always uh, great to be able to kind of get out a little bit more. Um, and then Alicia, at your campus, do you also have similar programs like Kathy was talking about how they have the Hive? Do you guys have some of those outsourced services? You did say that you had um, um, some of the programs that are, that are led there. Um, we have right now we we offer individual music therapy um but we would i'm very interested in developing music therapy groups based on needs so if people came to this workshop and there were several people that wanted to return um we could create a group um for you know specifically for um you know with this community um for um the specific type of trauma work and we you know i'm very interested in offering that so um you know we, we would look at that okay perfect um and so again with these other two ladies same you'll probably see me in the morning and then i'll probably just scooch out or maybe i'll you know hang out nearby and you know see if anybody wants to grab lunch afterwards to kind of decompress and talk about like our takeaways or, you know, to see how I can service, you know, this, this community that we have. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can either, we're probably going to do like repeats the following year for people that are interested and, or add additional, um, things. I, I, um, met someone that does like yoga therapy, which, which is only tough because, you know, then we're talking about like physical ability, um and like I have family members who just can't go head over heels like they just kind of get that um they get that like uh 
vertigo, you know, like everyone gets like vertigo and then they're like, yeah, no, I'm not downward facing anything, you know? Like, <laughs> Um, oh, thank you, Kathy. I'm going to grab this and put it in our Facebook chat as well. Oops, let me just copy this link really quick for our folks at home and put it in the face. I know I'm trying to trying to manage these screens here. Okay, so this is the um, the page. If you guys are on Facebook Live here, um, that. Kathy is sharing for uh, art therapy locator for the American Art Therapy Association. So if you guys need that, you can grab it there. Um, so I think that, um, I don't know, was there any, okay, uh, insurance, we did talk, you did talk about insurance. There are some that are covered, some that aren't. So you guys can expect, uh, for those of you at home, yeah, it depends on your insurance, really. I mean, um, if it's something that they would be willing to, that your insurance is, is more open, or if you have a case where you have um, seen, you know, a multitude of therapists or what have you, like, you know, you, you would probably know or be able to maybe even put in exceptions or what have you, like, it, it it's up to, um, to your insurance, really, like, who's, you know, what they're going to cover. Kathy? Oh, you're still muted. You hit it and then you hit it again. I don't Sorry, know. You you're did. right. There you go. Um, with regard to art therapy, um, we are under the umbrella of board um, of counselors and therapists in Maryland. And as such, as of 2017, um, we have insurance reimbursement parity, which means that um, our license is really equal to that of an LCPC. So if um, an individual is receiving counseling or therapy um, through a private practice and they're billing insurance for that, but they'd like to try art therapy or move in a direction of having art therapy services proper instead of um, counseling, um, then we can do that. And it is a seamless process and it's the same rates of reimbursement and guarantees. So mm. just gonna throw that out there because if you're certainly in a private practice that has an art therapist, um, there are assurances in Maryland law that um, that you can receive that service. Also wow, mm -hmm. that's great. I mean, I think that, um, you know, it's come a long way, I think, since um, since before. I mean, like I said, there was, uh, like I said earlier, you know, there's been such a, a, a focus on mental health and how important that is. Um, so hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll continue to see that more and more. Um, but that's good to hear that art therapy is included. And I think that that kind of when uh, when I was writing, when Alicia was talking, she was saying, you know, like I was thinking about the whole therapy, therapeutic process of everything. And um, when each one of you were talking, like you were talking about, like, you know, therapy versus the actual um, subsect of therapy that each one of you are in different ones. And it's like, you know, this might just help you propel because it's um uh, nonverbal, almost nonverbal communication versus like the therapy that is very verbal and kind of processing your thoughts and, and things like that. Um, so can I add to that? Yeah. Just to say that I think that all, all three of um, the modalities that we're here talking about have an embodied component to them. And I think, you know, therapies that connect mind and body, either through drumming, right, or through voice and feeling that rhythm and that sensation, or through art making and hands making and tearing and connecting in sensory ways or touching the horse, right, those, um, they get you out of that cognitive space and mm -hmm. connecting all parts of self. And that's really when healing can begin. Um, in my opinion, um, yeah. when it's an embodied experience. So not just nonverbal, but embodied um, experience. Yeah. And I totally could, like I said, I am not, I am not one that has ever, you know, um, gone through those. I don't know what I do. I think, I think I just started running and I just run as far as I can, as fast as I can. Um, <laughs> that's, that's what I do, but I mean, you know, teach their own, but I think that, um, you know, it's, it's really interesting because it does, it does make sense. You know, it makes sense that, you know, if you're just walking to a therapist's office, they try to like make the, the colors on the wall, you know, um, the calming and they try to elicit like this feeling, but really when you go into any doctor's office, any therapist's office, like you, you've already got like these kind of built up like emotions of what you're expecting. And so if some, some, something can get you out of that headspace, 
then you can open, right? Like you can't open if you're already, like you're already holding when you go in. Um, and so it it is super interesting that all of these things kind of work in that way. Um, but does that mean that people should only go to one type of therapy? Like how hard is that to, um, to have those experiences, especially when it comes to insurance, right? Let's, I mean, let's just be honest. Like, you know, you know that you're going to go into something. I think that um, with, with Sherry's connection, I think it's a little bit different because I think they're still kind of struggling for that insurance, like how to kind of go into a different kind of space um, and really kind of provide that where insurance is recognizing what she's doing. Um, and so that's that's tough as well, because, you know, now we're talking about coming out of pocket for something that you need. Um, and so that was the one reason why I really liked wrapping that into this, where we can provide them a very nominal cost and way to kind of experience that, to see if that's something that is worth exploring more. Um, but let's talk on the therapy side, like, is it okay to see more than one person? Like, what does what does that look like? How should people, um, if you have a therapist at home, how what what should what do you guys think about that? Can I speak to that? I think that um, every therapist has their their toolbox, their modality, and the ways that um, someone can access their own self healing and, and ways that they empower their clients to um, self-awareness and to, you know, meet their own uh, goals for their own journey and their, their healing journey. Um, you know, sometimes with trauma, you just, you get to, a, I, I'll, I'm going to speak from a personal standpoint for a second. Um, mm -hmm. I was, a, I had um, domestic abuse um, personally. And I um, went, went to counseling and went to therapists and I, I, I just hit a wall where I could not speak about it. I could not talk about it anymore. I was sick of, of talking about it because it, it just made me feel worse at that time. That was where I was. And I went, um, I was referred by a colleague to an art therapist and I did some artwork and I, and it all, it, I was able to express all of my feelings, um, say things through creating the art it, without having to use words, which was just so freeing. And I just remember like digging into the paper with, with a black crayon. And um, it, it, at the end, um, the therapist, it, I, I was given a prompt um, for to do something specific. And I, um, you know, created this thing and it was mostly black, but then at some point I was like, okay, the, I'm done with the black. And I put other colors on the edge and, and that, and, and I felt like, it was like, I can't, I can't draw any more black. I'm, I'm done with the black. And that was a turning point for me. Like that was, I started to move forward after that. And, yeah. um, you know, that's just a personal experience. And I'm a music therapist and I play music for myself all the time, but I needed something different mm -hmm. for me to, um, to move through. I was in a stuck place and I needed to get unstuck and move through. So, um, and I still had my counseling. I still had my therapy. I still went to groups, you know, I had all these things going on, but, um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, sometimes you hit a wall with one type of therapy and, and it's great to add something else nice. that can give you an avenue. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, that I think is um, kind of how I, in my head was, you know, I haven't done it or I have not done art therapy. Um, but when my, my cousin that I was telling you guys about did it, I mean, she, I mean, her explanation of like what had happened and what she went through and um, 
the kind of like that, like rainbow at the very end where she was like, you know, this is what happened. And, uh, you know, the instruction was like to, I think they had to like write words that were like write things, like write on this canvas. And then they, they wiped it clean. They painted white over it. And then um, she painted something like amazing on top of it. And, and she was like, you know, at the end, she said she was like sobbing and she was like, oh my God, like that was like, and she, you know, art major art, like everything about uh, a lot of like, just, you know, crafters and just art people that, that have that creative energy um, kind of do. And, you know, it was so important and so telling to me because it was someone that I care about deeply and who is an art person, like you said. So it, um, it kind of put her outside of her contents because, you know, so many times we're kind of in our own box. And um, so thank you for sharing that. I mean, I think that's very telling. Uh, so we've got about five minutes left. So here we go. Um, anything that you guys would like to say and then wrap up. And uh, if you want to leave your contact info or anything that you feel like you, you missed or any last minute questions to the group. Here we go. We'll go in order. Sherry. <laughs> So, yes, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about that um, as far as having other therapists that most of my clients do work with other therapists as well. And Castalt provides the opportunity to really work through a lot of unfinished business. So that way the person feels a sense of wholeness. Um, because it's experiential. There's a lot of different exercises that we do out, out in the pasture and it's not talk therapy, um, but it's a good uh, you know, source of a release, I would say, you know, to work through some of the things that, that might be you know, bothering you. Um, and it's definitely creative. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much. And I look forward to um, seeing you on Saturday. Me too. I'm excited. So don't forget for those of you at home, that is this Saturday. I will drop links to that um, or you can drop a message over to me if you want to get in. Seven more slots available for that. All right. Kathy. Um, just continuing to appreciate Alicia's um, story and, and illuminating the power of creative expression um, to really make tangible um, those things that are kicking around and don't have words and are residing in our bodies and, um, and in the cobwebs um, in the limbic system. And really just, um, again, the power of art to kind of scoop in there and bring forward um, something to make meaning around, um, something to further explore whether that then is with words or with more art expression. So, um, you know, we will be just scratching the surface of engaging in process and um, working with materials and welcoming all that that come, but it is a really rich, um, all creative arts therapies are really rich form of, of therapy, um, either standalone or adjunctively with other. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, do you know what I didn't ask? Uh, let, let me go to Alicia first. Alicia, go ahead. Um, I just want to say that I hope to see um, many people in the fall. We'll announce the date um, to come out and, you know, join a, a community opportunity for drumming together, making music together, um, releasing tension, releasing um, in a cathartic way. Um, feelings that you may not even be aware of or don't have a, a words to them or don't don't have uh, haven't been identified even by you sometimes um, you know this nonverbal intervention of making this music in a group enables us to connect to a lot of parts of ourselves that we are uh, not connected to because it is a physical connection and um you know trauma does live in our body so um it's a wonderful physical way to be mindful and release some of those things that may be um kind of buried in um in the cobwebs as kathy said yeah yeah for sure and i'm definitely hoping for some great um at least not necessarily breakthroughs in this round but i i'm definitely hoping that these introductions to different healing 
paths um, will help um, people who are willing to kind of step outside of their box. Um, really quickly, roughly two hours, roughly, roughly, right? Mm -hmm. um, each of the sessions would be roughly two hours, not including your commute. Um, whoever is leading the event, I'm going to try to get one of our more like senior people to lead each one of the events and then um, possibly like offer to to grab a lunch, you know, lunch to kind of decompress together. Um, if if you wish to, if not, totally understood, especially if you're driving, you know, an hour out to some of these places. Um, but want to provide those opportunities. For those of you at home, again, my name is Sandra from Maryland Crime Victims Resource Center. I hope that this has been informative to you. Please don't keep yourself in your current box if you feel that you need other venues, if you feel that just going to a counselor, just going to a, a therapist is not going to work for you. Try healing with horses, try art therapy, try music therapy, try different things that will help you along in your process. I'm not a professional. I'm just trying to provide resources to you at home and hope that um, we can create, uh, you know, these caring connections that really, you know, speak to each other. If you want to try it with family members or not family members, you might not want them, you know, with you at all. You might want to be with uh, people that have similar stories, but but not related to, you know, um, you get to decide what your safe space is. Um, and this is just an opportunity to really not go through your insurance, you know, just dig out, you know, 20 bucks and, and make a donate, donation to Maryland crime victims. Uh, these, these individuals have made it possible that we can provide these as opportunities. So please take advantage of those. Um, and also, I spoke to someone who is um, interested. Don't think that because your trauma happened 20 years ago that you're not as worthy as the person that, you know, had a trauma five years ago. This is not, you know, we're not judging people based on the time or, or amount of, you know, lapsed time has gone by or what have you. Your healing is important, even if it was 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years ago. I don't, I don't care. Please take advantage of this. It's not going to be the first time we offer these. So don't think that you're taking a slot that is meant for someone else. And if someone else came and there wasn't a slot available, believe me, these ladies and I will make it happen so that we can try to accommodate uh, the people that that really need it. Uh, and I just wanted to throw that out there. It was just, uh, it was heavy on my mind because of a conversation that I had where she was like, oh, before I sign up, I wanted to make sure, you know, this this happened this many years ago. And I'm like, girl, uh, so please, please come out, um, make new friends, make new connections, learn new things and get that healing that you deserve. Okay. Uh, that's all I have. If you guys need us, uh, if you need info on any of these lovely ladies, let me know and I'll get them over to you. And I appreciate you ladies for this opportunity. I'm so excited uh, to see what comes of this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much.